Welcome back. Well, as you saw before the break, Plaid Cymru has stood aside in the Brecon and Radnorshire by-election. And joining us now is the party's leader, Adam Price. Good morning, Thank you for Sophie. being with us. Isn't it a bit strange for a Welsh nationalist party to not stand in a seat in Wales? It's, it's never an easy decision, I think, for a political party to, uh, to, 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 to stand down. But, you know, we live in unique times and I think um, this moment called for a new approach. I mean, particularly we're about to, uh, well, you know, a few days to, to B-Day, Boris Day, a new prime minister with a terrible you know, frightening policy on, on Brexit. And I think at this time, you know, we're going to be we're going to be dealing with the consequences of what may happen in the weeks and months ahead for a generation. And I think that's why we had to do um, what I think many people have been hoping for. But, you know, Brecon and Radnor is a template for potentially something much bigger, which is people coming together across party, recognising, of course, we're different political parties with with differences amongst us. But on at this time on this issue, we need to build our wider alliance. So do you think that this is effectively a blueprint that could be extended to other seats? I, I very much hope so. So I, I, immediately after the European elections, I, I wrote to all the leaders of the pro-Remain parties. Uh, those talks were already happening when, of course, then the, the petition happened for the, for the by-election. And the by-election now is the platform, I think, where, where I hope we'll be able to demonstrate that this can work. And you're having those conversations then with other parties? Yes, yes, they're ongoing. Uh, and, you know, I mean, we, we, we're not doing this, I, I, I believe, for a one-off. We're seeking to build the basis for that wider Remain Alliance. And as you saw from the analysis uh, from James a, a few minutes ago, you know, this could be very, very significant. I mean, this could be a game changer in terms of the electoral map. If there is a, a snap election called, uh, then this could make the, all the difference in terms of what's going to happen in the, in the months ahead. At the same time, in some ways, Brecon and Radnorshire was an easy call to make. I mean, you guys have historically done pretty poorly there, haven't you? You haven't been big contenders. I mean, is this not more about you know, making sure you don't lose your deposit rather than anything else? Well, I, I, I think, it, yeah, it's certainly, I think, hopefully fertile territory for, uh, you know, uh, for a Remain Alliance. But I think, you know, in a sense, we're breaking a mould here. I mean, politics, by its nature, its culture is very tribal. You know, political parties find it very difficult to work uh, across those divides. But the difficulty will be, won't it, in whether or not to run in a constituency where you actually have a shot of winning. Well, look, I mean, obviously, in, in terms of any discussions, then actually sitting down and then w w working out if we get if we get to that stage, uh, who stands down where, that's, that's with the nitty gritty. But I think if you're able to establish the principle on a positive basis, demonstrate, look, with goodwill, it's possible for political parties to come together on this particular issue, which is a defining question of our generation. And, you know, I think the, the, uh, we've had such a positive response. It's almost as if... I think the public sometimes are ahead of, you know, the, the, the culture of political parties. The public wanted this, you know, at this, at this testing time in politics, I think people want to see us working together across those party boundaries because what, um, you know, uh, what unites us on this issue is far more important at this time than anything that divides us. If you're talking about what the public want, what the public wanted in Wales at the time of the referendum was to leave the EU. So why are you, the self-styled party of Wales, campaigning for another vote? Well, look, I mean, I'm in the persuasion business, right? I mean, at the moment, um, uh, about 20% of the population in Wales support independence. It's rising, by the way, probably because of the shambles that is Westminster and Brexit at the moment, right? But we want to actually build that. And, and the same with the European issue, right? We want, want to persuade the people of Wales that actually the Brexit that is on offer is not in our national can interest. You imagine, can you imagine having a referendum on Welsh independence after campaigning for so many years, people voted out, and then actually the politicians were like, oh no, let's give you another go, let's get another well, answer. I, I actually said, I think, two days after the, uh, the referendum in 2016, that there would always have to be, you know, a, a second public vote, a second referendum, because it was different to the independence referendum in Scotland, where there was, you know, there, there was a, a, a thick dossier, a white paper presented to every citizen in Scotland explaining in fine granular detail what that meant. So voters didn't where, understand? No, voters weren't told. The politicians failed. Uh, and in fact, many of them lied, as, as, as we know now. And that's the problem, and that's what's left us, you know, in the, in the three years since we've just been going around in circles constantly, that's why we need a second referendum, in order to finally determine the future. OK. Thank you very much for coming on the programme uh, this morning. Thank you.